I want to build a robot like Boston Dynamics. They build all the crazy robots that can do this or that. Can I do that? No, I can't. The goal for my robot will be very simple. I want it to go from here to here. You know, low expectations, higher chance of success. They already made the dogs, humanoids and this weird arm on wheels. So to make my project different, I want to build a spider robot or SPDR bot. Speeder bot. But I want to do it in the Boston Dynamics kind of way. I want to train this robot to walk in simulation with the help of the sponsor of this video, NVIDIA. But what does it even mean that the robots can learn to walk on their own? There is a special software from NVIDIA called Isaac Sim and Isaac Lab and that software lets you simulate all the physics and your robots and you can then use reinforcement learning to let the robots figure out on their own how to achieve a certain task. Let me give you an example, but I need to find a dog. And I found a dog. This is Shiba. Say hi. <laughs> Shiba, watch too, watch. Shiba. Zostań? Zostań. Reinforcement learning is the same for robots and for dogs. So here we have the stick and the stick is our task. When we throw it, the dog should bring the stick back. And when he does, we will give him a snack. Yes, it worked. Now we can throw the stick again. And when the robot gives the stick back, sorry, when the dog gives the stick back, we will give him another reward. So for dogs, the stick is a task and the snack is a reward. For robots, the task can be anything and the reward, well, it's just numbers in the programming language. You ready? And just like the dog is trying to maximize the number of snacks, the robots are trying to maximize the amount of rewards. It's a bit more interesting to train the dogs, but also robots are definitely easier to train than Shiba. Ale z patykiem wróć. Z patykiem. Przynieś. Przynieś. Okay, let's go back to training robots and the CAD design of my spider bot. Spider bot was designed in Fusion 360 around Nvidia Jetson Nano. I wanted to make sure that even such a big single board computer will fit in there. It has four legs and three servo mechanisms in each leg. All the parts were designed for 3D printing and according to open robotic platform rules so that I can easily attach any holder to it. Can we now just bring the fusion design into Isaac Sim? Unfortunately not, we have to convert our design to URDF. URDF is a very popular format in robotics and fortunately there is a plugin for fusion that you can easily use, it's totally free and on github you can find more details on how to use it. It is very important to simplify your model, one of the components has to be named base link otherwise it won't work and you cannot have any nested components so each component can have only bodies inside. Simplify your model as much as possible and merge the bodies to limit the number of joints and number of bodies. That way it will work much better in Isaac Lab. And then you can just run the plugin, choose the folder and save your URDF file. If you want to know how to install Isaac Sim and Isaac Lab, check out the documentation. Everything is really nicely described there and the software is constantly changing so it might change a bit in the future. You can also take a look at Lichi AI YouTube channel. He has a lot of tutorials on how to install but also how to use Isaac Sim and Isaac Lab. I highly recommend to start by playing with the examples. There is a lot of resources and assets already in the Isaac Sim. You can just simply import whatever you want. There are even full warehouses already built so that you can use them for your robotics projects. And that's really cool just to play around with. You can also run policies for robots like Spot from Boston Dynamics and train your own for this robot, but also for example for humanoids. This policy took me about 20 minutes to train and as you can see, it works quite well and it runs all in Isaac Lab or Isaac Sim. To me, it really feels like a computer game, but one that is productive and really, really interesting. But how can we bring our own robot to Isaac Sim? We just have to import the URDF file like this and on the right we have to choose the proper settings, important to choose the movable base or static base for example for a robotic arm. You click import, yes and here you have your robot in Isaac Sim. Let me change the light setting so that you can see it a bit better and now when we press the play on the left the robot will fall because well gravity. Now we can add from the physics the ground plane and move it a little bit down and now our robot will fall to the floor. We can also for example change the color of the material of the robot to make it a bit more visible. When we press play the robot just falls to the floor and nothing happens but we can turn on physics inspector, choose the robot from the stage menu and now we can drive 
the joints of the robot and it will actually move and interact according to all the physics rules that are defined in Isaac Sim. When you select the joints in the stage and then go down there, you can modify all the settings, the stiffness, dampening, the max force, everything there is to modify with joints. Also in the physics inspector you can select all the joints at once and move them as I do it here. Once your stage is prepared, just remember to save it as USD. No worries, I won't bore you with all the technical details on my Isaac Lab setup. I used a lot of examples, a lot of resources on the internet to get that working and all of that will be shared for free on GitHub. It's an externally managed direct project and you can just create your own project with this command if you want to start from scratch and you can download everything from my GitHub and run your own training for the speederbot on your own computer. If you develop something interesting, if your policy works, please let me know, I would be happy to test it on my robot. Isaac Sim is for simulating the robot, but Isaac Sim is just for training the robots with reinforcement learning. You can run hundreds or even thousands of robots there and let them figure out how to do certain tasks through rewards and observations. And running thousands of robots in Isaac Lab obviously requires a powerful GPU. I will be using RTX 4090 thanks to the support from Nvidia. Thanks to them I also got an opportunity to go to GTC in Paris and I took part in a workshop focused on Isaac Sim and Isaac Lab. I talked to the experts, I talked to other participants. It was a great event and a great learning opportunity. I totally recommend the workshops from Nvidia. I also saw the exhibition, all the interesting robots, new technologies that are the developed right now. It was very interesting and I'm really glad I got this opportunity. So thanks a lot to the sponsor of this video, NVIDIA. And then I have been training and training and training, trying different rewards, different observations. I wanted to keep the observations quite simple as I had no access to, for example, the speed at which the robot is traveling. I'm talking about the real robot because of course in simulation you can do all the crazy stuff but then how you are going to implement on the real robot, that's a different thing. So I wanted to keep everything very simple and I limited the number of observations to only essential stuff that I have access to on my very simple robot. At the beginning, it wasn't working at all. The robots were just stationary, they were sitting or just collapsing into a ball, but then they started moving a little bit in very different ways, not really optimal. Some robots worked fine, but it all depends on the initial conditions as once again, I do not have much sensors on the robot themselves. And here, let's take a short break from the simulation and let's build the real robot. All the parts were 3D printed with Bamboo Up A1. Before assembling the robot, I made sure that all the servos are in the middle point. That's a very important step. And I used a very small and cheap servo tester for that. After 3D printing all the parts with PETG filament, I went to my workshop. Here in this box I finally have all the parts, so it's time to build the real robot. I have the 3D printed parts, the servo mechanisms, I made sure that all of the servos are in the middle point, that's very important. And now I will assemble everything with some screws that I have right there. The assembly went surprisingly smoothly, the robot is quite big and heavy, but I'm really happy with the result. And if you want to 3D print and build your very own spider bot, you can get all the files for this project at industry.cc slash store, there will be a link in the video description, you will get all the files ready for 3D printing as well as my design file from Fusion so that you can modify it and adjust it to your needs. It's a great way to support my work, link is in the description, thank you very much.
The robot was designed for the Jetson Nano, but for now, for simplicity, I will be using the Raspberry Pi Pico and I bought a special board where you can connect up to 16 servo mechanisms, but I will be using only 12. Thanks to that, the connection was much easier. Of course, you can do something like this with a proto board, but it's just 10 bucks, so it wasn't worth it to make it on my own. The cables were a total mess, so with some cable wrap, I organized all of them and that made the project a lot more professional. The cable management in a robot always feels like the cherry on top. It looks so good now. That's how it was before and that's how it looks like now. Also, the cable wrap is quite stiff. It's not stiff on its own, but it makes the cable stiff. So now when the legs are moving, the cable won't get in the way of the leg, which is obviously good for the robot. It's not only about how it looks like, but also the safety for the robot. Totally recommend the cable wrap. Now let's put inside the Raspberry Pi Pico and let's try to move the legs. This will be very cool, but also very terrifying. I made a simple MicroPython test script for Raspberry Pi Pico just for one leg because it's better to break 3 servers than 12 at once and I tested the leg but it worked fine and moved without any problems. I was once again very close to a total panic mode because of these cable crocodiles I connected everything and it looked like the motors lack torque. They are rated for 25 kg per centimeter or 2.5 Newton meters which is quite a lot. I did some calculations and it seemed plenty enough for this kind of robot, but it, the robot wasn't really moving properly. It turned out that, well, the quality of these cables is not super high, and because of that there was quite a big voltage drop on the cable itself, and that caused the servos to like receive lower voltage, and yeah, in the end uh, it wasn't working, but now when I'm connected to a shorter and higher quality cable, everything works fine. Controlling it like this with the sliders on my computer. That's not really easy. And it's easy to break stuff that way when you try to develop some kind of movements or algorithms. The good thing is, I can just do it all in simulation. I don't even have to be playing with the real robot right now. I can just do it on my computer, test different movements, test different algorithms, and then bring them onto the real robot and test in real life. It will save me a lot of broken servers in this video and hopefully it will be quite cool. And now it's time to go back to simulation. As I started improving the reward system, the observation, training for longer with a higher number of robots, they started to exploit the system and just score the highest number of points with the rewards as possible. And that's how I turned the spider robot into a dinosaur. Yes, in simulation, theoretically, yes, that should work and the robot should just run on two legs and stabilize itself with the head and a tail just like a dinosaur. Unfortunately, it obviously won't work on the real robot, but it looks quite cool. As I have been doing that, I realized more and more what can be done in simulation and what not really, what kind of observations and rewards are important. It was a very nice learning experience and it was so cool and interesting to see these robots starting to move as they should. How much time does it take to train a single policy? It all depends on the number of robots and number of iterations, but it's anything between 5 minutes and probably like an hour. Usually it took about 20 minutes to train a one single policy. I got some of them working quite well, but then there was a problem. You cannot just grab the policy from Isaac Lab and put it on the robot with the hope that it will somehow work. You need to test it firstly in simulation, for example, in Isaac Sim. So I started experimenting with bringing the policy from Isaac Lab to Isaac Sim to validate it before I put it on the real robot. And that, that became a very big problem. There are a few examples on the internet and in Isaac Lab on how to use RSL RL policy with Isaac Sim, but I have been using SKRL. And for this one, there is pretty much no examples on how to do it. But there will be. I talked directly with NVIDIA and they told me that they are working on improving the documentation and including examples for SKRL. I tried to ask for help on the internet, on, on the Discord from NVIDIA. There is definitely a way to get it working. I just wasn't able to find it yet. I even asked for help, the guy from Litchi AI, and we talked on Discord, he tried to help me, but in the end we did not manage to get a solution for that. Oh, I spent four days, maybe even more, on training the policies and then running them with Isaac Sim. So it's time to give up. Of course not with the project because, I mean, the robot is so cool and I want to see it moving, 
So I will use Isaac Sim as a playground and I will try to develop my own algorithm for walking and test it in Isaac Sim and then put it on the robot. So here is my setup in the simulation. This is the robot. Here I have a simple text file that I can edit. And whenever I save this text file, my robot is moving. And as you can see, it moves the arms forward and then it should move forward. Something is wrong with the friction there, but I'm just interested in how the legs are moving, so it should be fine. I know I'm skipping a lot of details in this video. I just don't want it to be boring and just me sitting in front of the computer and explaining stuff. But if there will be enough people interested in the comments, so please let me know if you are interested, I can make like an hour long video just about my Isaac Sim and Isaac Lab setup, how I went from Fusion to Isaac Sim. I think this is probably the best way to get into very advanced robotics because all you need is a GPU and a computer and you can build all the crazy robots without actuators, motors, mechanical design, 3D printing parts, assembling, microcontrollers. You can just program everything on your computer and test the craziest robotic setup you can imagine without actually building anything. I know building something is fun, but before you do that, you need to make sure that it will actually work. And with Isaac Sim and Isaac Lab, you can easily do it and you can do it at low budget. It's also very safe because you are not going to break expensive hardware. I think that anyone interested in advanced robotics should definitely try Isaac Sim and Isaac Lab. So I started experimenting and playing with Isaac Sim and with my robot in there. And it was a great way to not break anything and try literally everything. And when the movement looked promising, I could just run it on the real robot and compare it with the simulation. I reprinted one of the legs of the robot to include my logo thanks to the IMS system, printing with multiple colors is really a lot of fun. And after replacing the leg I thought how about adding little socks printed with TPU to the robot to increase the friction and maybe improve how the robot performs. In the end it made the robot even less stable so I ended up not using this. Here I have been trying a lot of different parameters and values to make the robot run smoothly and a bit faster, as you can see not everything can be done in simulation. I promise you, it only looks like I'm going totally mad. Okay, maybe a little bit, but just a little bit. That was okay. But okay is not good enough for me. I need more than just okay. Do you remember about the goal that I mentioned at the beginning of this video? From here to here. Subscribe if you want to see more projects like this. Hopefully one day you will learn how to walk on your own.